Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's virtual meetup. On today's agenda, we will discuss the new coronavirus site safety and health screening solutions. We are recording this meetup and we'll be posting it, uh, posting the recording to YouTube. We have a playlist there that you can check out this meetup as well as past ones. And I'll share the, the YouTube playlist link that you can get to in the chat window shortly. Later on in the meetup, we'll have a uh, section for questions and answers. So if you want to submit questions along the way, um, you can use the Q&A option, the, use the Q&A panel at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So you can submit questions there and we can answer them in the designated section, uh, se sections. So with that said, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Chris to get us started. Thanks, Matt, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Delaney. I'm on the uh, ArcGIS Solutions team. Uh, and today we'll be covering a number of uh, our coronavirus solutions that we've developed uh, for organizations uh, to support uh, their response and uh, recovery efforts over the last seven months or so. And we'll be highlighting two of our newest solutions, coronavirus site safety uh, and coronavirus health screening. And then we'll be um, providing a little context in how those solutions can be applied to um, upcoming uh, organizational challenges, in particular, um, how to apply the solutions to support uh, conducting safe elections in your community. But before I hop into the new before solutions, I just want to take a moment to review where we've been over the last seven months. Uh, for many of you as well, it's been a challenging last seven months as organizations have struggled to maintain operations, provide services, uh, and support both their employees, uh, uh, customers, or citizens that they serve. Um, when we look back to March, um, as the, uh, in the initial phases of the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, started uh, getting underway, organizations were looking at how to understand uh, who was available, both from a facilities and from a personnel perspective. Uh, so the solutions team started rolling out a number of solutions to be able to help organizations uh, monitor their response, uh, meet, be able to track things like hospitalization and PPEs to understand capacity, to provide support for business continuity as organizations struggled to maintain uh, business operations, uh, enabling organizations that are supporting testing to be able to track and monitor uh, and promote the availability of testing. Uh, and as we moved into the summer months and in some places, uh, levels of uh, rates of, of COVID started to decline and uh, reopening was possible, um, helping uh, organizations uh, enable small businesses uh, to uh, and other businesses to be able to reopen, uh, recover, and to promote that they were open to citizens and customers um, to help with uh, elderly populations who maybe needed a little bit of uh, additional attention uh, to support their uh, wellness uh, and to kind of track the progress and status of that recovery. Uh, and so now as we move into the fall and winter season uh, and uh, we are now sort of managing the new normal of living with the pandemic as it continues on, but at the same time having to um, get fully back to work, whether it's uh, schools and universities reopening or whether it is uh, businesses or other uh, governmental organizations reopening where there's partial uh, return to normalcy for uh, business operations. We have a number of solutions that support that work. Um, several were released earlier this year, business continuity to help manage the and understand the operational capacity of your workforce and the status of the facilities that your organization is responsible for, to also uh, our business reopening solution to be able to uh, evaluate uh, case data and impact on business locations. But now, uh, as that opening starts to occur more and more, two new solutions that we'll show you today, coronavirus site safety, which is intended to help organizations create health safety plans for a facility, a site, or a campus to help understand capacities of areas given social distancing requirements 
and to maintain the operations of that health safety plan to ensure the safety of uh, employees, citizens, customers as locations are reopening. And then very specifically, as you have uh, citizens or uh, employees returning to a location to perform health screenings um, at that location, whether that is self-attestations in advance of returning back to work or to be able to understand who is entering and exiting a facility and validating that health screening uh, provisions have been followed uh, as they've entered or exited that facility. So first I'm gonna show you our new coronavirus site safety solution. As I mentioned, that's going to help organizations create and manage uh, a health safety plan for their facilities. Uh, and as Matt mentioned earlier, please feel free to um, uh, add your questions to the chat window immediately after we demonstrate both the site safety and the health uh, planning solutions. Uh, we'll take a number of questions that you have. So uh, we won't wait till the end on questions. If you do have questions, feel free to enter them in the chat at any time. So as I mentioned before, the coronavirus site safety solution really helps organizations to be able to create health safety plans for their facilities, manage those plans, uh, be able to, and that's, that includes things like the placement of PPE, hand sanitizer, uh, preparedness for uh, entry and exit for facilities, being able to manage where you're gonna be isolating potential cases, uh, and, uh, being able to prepare estimates for crowds uh, that you're going to have at a particular location. And then for the day-to-day -day operations of that health safety plan, uh, to be able to have tools to help your personnel responsible for that, uh, to be able to manage that health safety plan on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's really where I want to start off. Um, organizations that are reopening have to struggle with sort of this challenge of who is responsible for ensuring the health safety of employees, citizens, or customers at a location, or students if it's a, a university or a school? Uh, in many organizations, there's sort of a role that is the health safety officer that may live in your human resources department, it may live in your occupational safety and health department, it may live in your facilities department, but ultimately someone who's responsible for building that plan and ensuring its execution over time. And that's really what much of the solution is oriented for. Starting off, um, in order to build a, uh, in order to have a health safety plan and to monitor it over time, you need to start off with kind of building a health safety plan. And the coronavirus site safety form is a way to do that. So this is a form that a health safety officer could use to uh, create, uh, start the kind of initiation of a health safety plan. It's going to give you a, uh, you're going to enter a plan name. In this case, the example I'll be showing is around a high school reopening. So the plan name for this is the Naperville North High School Reopening. We're going to describe the kind of activities that are occurring for which a health safety plan is required, when that plan will go into effect, who the primary contact of that plan is, uh, and uh, if there's additional documents associated with that plan, maybe a PDF of kind of your formal plan that you've already created, and then just sort of defining the location. This is sort of general information about the location for which a health safety plan is required. And then that goes into sort of the main piece of this, which is uh, a health, coronavirus site safety manager. This is a configuration of crowdsource manager, and this enables a health safety officer in an organization to be able to um, prepare and plan uh, site plans for each of the facilities for which they are responsible. So uh, in this particular example, uh, I may be a health safety officer and have a variety of different locations for which I'm responsible for building health safety plans for. A good example of this is on a college campus where the university system overall may have a number of different sites. They may have a downtown campus and a satellite campus. They may have a physical plant in a different location. And the coronavirus site safety manager is sort of the one-stop shop where you can go in, uh, you can see all of the different locations that you need to have a plan for that you've created using the coronavirus site safety form. And from there, 
uh, once I have, um, I've got a particular plan of interest, I can select it. I can see that um, this is, Naperville North plan is currently in the planning phase. If I click the pencil, I can change the status to active from planned. I can edit the information initially entered into the form. Uh, but most importantly, I have two buttons here. Uh, I have a button to enable me to edit the site plan for Naperville North. And I have, once it's been completed, a button to help me share the site plan out to stakeholders, whether that's uh, employees at the high school or whether that's to parents and students. So before I get there, I need to build my site plan. So to do that, I'll press this button. And this is going to trigger a configuration of Web App Builder called Coronavirus Site Safety Map Editor. This is going to give me the ability to place all of the health safety assets that I'm going to need to um, properly plan a health safety plan for my facility. And you'll notice that um, it has pre-filtered for my particular uh, location, my Naperville North High School plan. Uh, and as I, as I zoom into the uh, layout for this, I can see a number of uh, assets that have already been placed as part of my coronavirus site safety plan. And you'll see the different options that I have here. I have health related points. So this is a variety of features that you can place that are related to health assets. So temperature screening locations, PPE stations, hand washing stations. If you're controlling entry and exits out of buildings, the ability to define, designate those, hand sanitizer stations, testing locations. And so it's just as simple as, oh, I'm gonna add in another hand sanitizer station over this location. I can further describe that information. I can even give it a floor number so that this plan can be locationally aware. And then I can so I'll give that level floor number zero and press save. And now I've added that asset to my site safety plan. In addition to points, I also have lines. So many organizations are having to control uh, who is going where and be prepared for uh, controlling the number of people that can go in and out of a location. We've got some line assets to help you do that. So rope and stanchion, temporary fencing, plexiglass shielding, uh, isolation transport routes if you've got potential cases, and ingress and egress routes. Uh, but one of the kind of most requested capabilities that organizations are often running into is whether it's planning for people coming in and out of a location or if you're in outdoor or large areas, it's really understanding how many people can I put in there to be compliant with six foot social distancing guidelines. And to support that, we've created uh, two layers One's called social distance crowd lines and one's called social distance crowd areas. And these are gonna help you create estimates based upon uh, the line that you've created or the polygon area that you've defined. So for example, uh, maybe I am going to have a kind of student queuing area before they go into the building. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm going to kind of designate this parking lot. I'm gonna select the crowd areas feature and then I'm just gonna draw a simple polygon. I can name this, and so I'll, I'm gonna name this queuing area one. And uh, I could describe it, I could again add a floor number. And then when I save this, you'll see that based on uh, social distancing guidelines, this uh, 29,000 square foot area can support socially distanced people up to 260 persons. So that's important information that helps me make a, a data-driven decision to uh, in, in control the number of people that I'm gonna let into that location. Now in practice, maybe that 260 number where technically allowed, maybe is a little bit more than you want. So you can then go back into this feature and you can control it Say maybe I'm, I'm 260 is a lot. I want to give a little bit more than six foot buffer area. So I'm going to allow, you know, 230 as the maximum capacity for this location. This information is important. The maximum capacity that you're capturing in here uh, is important not only from a planning perspective, but as you'll see later on in this demonstration, the crowd areas that you create um, and the number of the maximum capacity for those areas 
can also be tracked operationally using an app to track the number of people currently in that location relative to its maximum capacity to ensure you don't go over capacity in those locations. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So that is um, crowd uh, estimates for areas. And we also have the same capability for lines. So if I needed to understand, all right, well, I'm expecting people queuing into this entrance right here and I'm going to I'm going to have them kind of queue generally here and then line up to do a health screening before they go into the building. And then I'm just going to draw a line here. How many people can I have in line where they are in a six foot, uh, they have six foot distance between the two of them. So again, I can draw the line, enter in some attributes, and then you'll see a label that shows up that shows me this is 150 foot, 55 foot line, and that supports 26 people. Just as an aside, you may be wondering how these estimates are generated. Well, from a technical perspective, uh, there is a label expression on both of these layers uh, in which there's a little arcade, and that arcade is enabling the, uh, the generation of this label uh, and performing the uh, analysis to be able to understand what the allowable uh, number of people are given six foot distancing in that line or in that area. In addition to those crowd estimate capabilities, we also have health areas to be able to, if you, got, you need to do sort of general sanitation or you need to isolate potential patients, get them away from the rest of your employees, students, or, uh, or customers. Uh, generalized um, areas for medical or hygiene or testing areas. If you need to designate parts of your campus facility that are closed, you've got that ability too. So this, Map Editor uh, application uh, really enables you to build a complete uh, facility health safety plan. Uh, it also gives you the ability to build out um, reports if you need to share that information or incorporate it into some kind of larger document. Uh, and that's also true with uh, if you need to just be able to create a uh, printable PDF or JPEG to put into a document, you've got printing capabilities for that as well. So once you've created uh, your site plan, uh, you can come back to your coronavirus site safety manager and the health safety officer can then share that site plan in an interactive map form with uh, their stakeholders. So students, employees, customers, um, whoever that makes sense for. Uh, in a very similar kind of application called the coronavirus site safety map viewer. Think of this really as the read-only version of the overall solution. This one's very straightforward. It's just a very simple legend to help you visualize all of the different assets. Again, we have a filter that lets automatically filters to the, the individual location. You'll also note that there is a floor number filter. So if I wanted to look at assets by individual floor, I've got that ability. Uh, that's particularly valuable for folks who may be using ArcGIS indoors services with ArcGIS online to be able to um, incorporate uh, the, your internal mapping of your facilities uh, into your health and safety plan. You can do that with this solution. Our help documentation provides some guidance on how to configure that. If I have the need to find specific, specific types of assets, I've got the ability to find those assets as well. So there's a filter that lets me search for certain types of assets. So if I just need to know, show me where all of the PPE stations are, I can select only those areas. And again, if I'm a, uh, a, an employee and I wanna be able to make a PDF or a screenshot of this, I've got a print widget that enables me to do that. So that's sort of the planning side of the coronavirus site safety solution. Again, that's oriented for a health safety officer responsible for building a health safety plan in an organization, uh, being able to designate those various assets, create that plan, and then share that plan out to the organizational stakeholders who need to understand where those assets may be located. But Health safety is not just about planning, it's also about implementation and operations on a day-to-day -day basis. So that health safety officer in your organization 
may also be responsible for ensuring that on a day-to-day -day basis, they are tracking and understanding potential issues related to health safety that may be arising that have to be dealt with to ensure that all of the employees, uh, citizens, or, uh, or customers on a site are properly being protected. And in order to do that, uh, the health safety officer, as part of the solution, has access to what you're seeing right now, the coronavirus site safety dashboard. The coronavirus site safety dashboard helps a health safety officer track three main health safety related workflows um, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and so those three workflows, I'm gonna show you on the dashboard and they are fed by um, mobile applications that help deliver information about health safety issues to the health safety officer uh, in this dashboard. So as you can see uh, on the top of the dashboard, I've got a, a filter that lets me pick the particular uh, health safety plan I want to view in my dashboard. It also enables me to uh, filter by floor if I need to. And so here again, I can see uh, my Naperville North um, health safety plan. And you'll notice that there's three main columns in this dashboard. The first is called issue reports. This enables a health safety officer to monitor health safety related issues that various employees uh, have reported to the health safety officer for follow-up that are related to um, COVID related health problems. So you can see I have a medical transport requested and I've got a request to restock PPE. Uh, so I can see that information uh, and if I need to, I can update the status of one of those uh, issues uh, by pressing the button on the dashboard that's going to open up my coronavirus site safety manager application again, where I can now review any of the issues that have come in. It pulls up that particular record for me. I can come in, I can make edits to that record, or most importantly, I can close it and or assign it out to a particular person. So that helps me keep track of these records over time. And then when I come back to my dashboard, I can see that that record has now been closed, is no longer an active record on my dashboard. So how does that information get reported? Well, what you're seeing right now is a um, live cast of my phone. Uh, that information gets reported to the health safety officer uh, via a Survey123 form. So I'm going to open up Survey123. And I'm an employee at this, uh, I'm a teacher at this Naperville North school and I've observed something so I can open up survey123 on my form or on my phone using coronavirus site issue reporter and I can uh, report a face mask compliance problem that I'm observing it is kind of medium priority group of teens hanging outside the building not wearing masks I can designate a location, uh, describe a location, enter in a floor. And once I've completed this, I can capture an image if I need to. I can submit that into my, uh, into my organization. And those reports show up here on uh, my map. I'm in Rochester, New York right now, not in Naperville. So, uh, this comes up. Uh, this comes up in uh, in an area that's kind of a different area from my example, but uh, hopefully you get the the example. Uh, and we just had one pop up here. So this gives you a sense of employees can now report potential health safety violations, and the uh, health safety officer can take action on those potential violations uh, and address those. In addition to being able to see open reports, I can also see a historical log of all issues that have come up. So if I need to revisit some historical issue, I've got the ability to do that as well. The second column in this dashboard is around capacity monitoring. So this relates back to the crowd areas that we're able to create using the uh, map editor application. Well, now I can track people coming in and out of those locations. So as you'll notice on this column, 
I can see that across all of the areas that I have designated in my organization, they have a cumulative uh, capacity of 430. And uh, across all of the areas, that crowd areas that I've designated, I'm curr I currently have 104 people in those areas, and that's a capacity of 24%. If I go to any one of these areas, I can click on it, I can see that this area, student area three that I've designated, maybe this is an open air classroom, is at 50%. I have 25 uh, people currently in that area and a maximum of 50 people allowed in that area. So that maximum has been designated as I created those areas using the map editor application. And now to monitor the current capacity, I have a configuration of App Studio. Uh, so using the App Studio player on my mobile device, I'm able to use an app that we've created that is a, uh, a customization that brings together capabilities from ArcGIS Quick Capture with ArcGIS dashboards to deliver this custom interface that you're seeing here. Now, if you've been to a big box store in the last seven months, you may have seen this, Home Depot or Costco, where there is someone at the front door monitoring people coming in and out of that particular location. And they know how many people are allowed to be in that location. Uh, and they need to ensure that the capacity of the location, maximum capacity relative to social distancing can't be exceeded. So that's what this application lets you do. When you've defined one of these areas shown on the map, uh, student area three, for example, uh, you've used the map editor to do that. You can use this dashboard now to keep an eye on how many people are currently in that location relative to its maximum capacity. And you may have uh, a security guard or some other employee at the entrance to this area with this app on their device enabling them to keep track of how many people are entering or exiting that location. So the way that this works is that that field worker would load this app using App Studio uh, Player onto their device. They would come in here, they'd enter in the name of the area that they're responsible for tracking, in this case, student area three. If they don't know what that area is, they can press the map tab and they can see the different areas in their organization. And then they can simply just start counting. So you got two big fat buttons down the, at the bottom of the app. And they're going to enable us to start kind of keeping track. You can see that uh, it's now moved from 25 to 27. Oops, uh, 25 to 27. And the gauge has gone from um, green to yellow. And as I continue to add people coming into this location, that chart starts to tell me that uh, we're getting close to capacity. So you're getting visual indications for that field worker that we are too close. Uh, and that information is also gain, then getting uh, relayed back up to the dashboard. It usually takes just a couple of seconds. But uh, you can see here, as I'm the health safety officer and I'm kind of monitoring all operations, I can then come into my location. I can see, uh-oh, we've reached maximum capacity and the field worker in that area, and there he is, he's now shutting people down from going in there because they've now exceeded the maximum social distance capacity for that particular area. So this tool really enables you to help field workers monitor capacities in areas uh, where you want to comply with social distancing guidelines and helps your Health, health safety officer or someone at a command level be able to ensure that overall across an entire facility where you're managing um, capacities for multiple locations that you're in compliance with your maximum capacities across a number of different locations within your facility. In addition, if you need to track that information of who's coming and going where, you also have a tab here that shows the live count of every single record of an entry or an exit into each of these locations. So uh, that's kind of the second workflow that operationally this dashboard supports. And the third is around cleaning and restocking. So um, many organizations are implementing policies and procedures with respect to routine cleaning, disinfecting, or restocking of PPE or other health assets. Um, and many of those involve kind of a, a 60 minute window. So every 60 minutes or maybe every four hours, that process is occurring. 
So how do you as a health safety officer ensure that you're in compliance with the policy that your organization has defined? Well, the health safety officer has a, a, a view here on their dashboard that shows how many uh, locations are past due um, for a cleaning or restocking according to the default in this dashboard is a 60 minute window, but you can configure that to your own preference. So what I'm seeing here is all 12 of the locations that are overdue for a cleaning, disinfecting or restocking in my organization. So I can see up there, it looks like there's a uh, medical tent that is overdue for cleaning. It's over here in our uh, isolation area that we've set up when we have a potential case. Uh, so that helps me know that that needs to get clean. So I can go contact one of our janitorial staff and they can go begin to do that work. So how do they report when they've performed that cleaning or that restocking? Well, on their mobile device, they have a configuration for ArcGIS Collector called the Cleaning in Restocking web map. So I can open up Collector uh, as the uh, janitorial staff. I can see my current live position and I can come in, I can click on that medical tent. I can simply click cleaning and restocking status. I can see the entire history of cleaning, restocking or disinfecting that has occurred at this location. And then I can log my cleaning by pressing add and then changing the status, adding a new status to cleaned. If I need to add some additional notes, I could do that. And if I need to indicate the numbers of boxes of various PPE, added to that location, I can add that information. And then once I've finished, I can press submit. And now that cleaning has been updated. So I can see that I've now just completed a, another cleaning at this location. And then as I come back to my dashboard, it usually runs just a, just a hair behind. Now you can see that that's just switched from uh, 12, past, uh, 12 past due to 11. It's been removed from the dashboard. So I know that I no longer have to worry about that one. With It's now been cleaned within my policy guidelines. If I'm interested in looking as the health safety officer for, at any of these locations, I can simply click on the location and I can click on the status history tab and see all of the times when that location has been cleaned. Now I've been showing you the uh, coronavirus site safety dashboard in a desktop version, but since the person who performs the role of health safety officer in your organization may be in fact um, uh, performing a number of different functions on top of their health safety function, uh, they may be on the go a lot. And so they may need to see this information while they're out in the field themselves. And so to support that, we've also shipped with the coronavirus site safety solution, a mobile version of this dashboard so that from your website, uh, from your phone or tablet, you have a mobile device friendly version of this dashboard that helps you track and monitor these three main workflows of issue reporting, capacity monitoring, and tracking of cleaning and restocking. And so in this way, uh, using the coronavirus site safety solution, uh, this is going to enable facilities to both build uh, health safety plans for their facility, and then to oversee and monitor the implementation and oper operationalization of that plan on a day-to-day -day basis. In this way, helping organizations get back to work in the new normal of the COVID pandemic. So with that, I'm now gonna turn it over to Chris Fox, uh, who and Chris is gonna talk about our new health screening solution. Great, thanks, Chris. Let me go ahead and share. Okay, so as employees return to work and locations begin to reopen to the public, organizations are taking steps to protect the health and safety of all individuals in their facilities. And so many organizations are asking employees and visitors to attest each day that they're symptom free they have not had recent contact with anybody who has tested positive for coronavirus. And many organizations are also requiring a temperature check before they're permitted to enter the building. So we created the Coronavirus Health Screening Solution to help you screen employees and visitors by requiring that they self-report any symptoms or contact um, that they've had, 
and record the result of a temperature check. And then it allows you to track who is permitted to enter the facility at, at, or a given location on a specific date. So let's go ahead and jump into the, the apps that come with the coronavirus health screening solution. The first um, form that comes with the solution is a employee health screening survey. And so this is a, uh, a survey that you can provide to employees inside your organization that allows them to self-report any symptoms or contact they've had um, with people who've tested positive for coronavirus. And by filling out this form, you're asking them to attest that they don't have any of these um, concerns that might indicate that they are at risk for COVID-19. Um, so the way we start this form is we're first going to select a particular location. And so this is supports a scenario where you have several buildings or multiple facilities, uh, different campuses, and you want people to check into the particular one that they're gonna be entering. For some organizations, there just may be one building or one location and you could hide or remove this question and, and not include it. Um, but I'm gonna select the first building. The way that this form works is if I log in with my named user, it's automatically gonna pull my full name and my email address into these, uh, these two forms, which makes it a nice uh, automation for filling it out. I don't have to repeat that information. I just sign in with my credentials. And now we're gonna ask um, some questions. So first, we're gonna ask uh, if you've tested positive for COVID-19 in the last 14 days. If I were to say yes to this question, it's going to tell me that based on my responses that I may, I am potentially at risk for COVID-19 and I'm not permitted to enter the building. Uh, in this case, because I'm an employee, we're asking that they follow up with their supervisor. Uh, if they were to say no to this question, we're gonna ask additional questions. And so the logic follows very similar to, the, to that. If they answer yes to any of the questions, then the survey is going to fail and they won't be permitted to enter the building. Uh, so this is a question about whether they're experiencing any COVID symptoms uh, that they can't attribute to a, another condition. So we'll say no here. And then the last health question is if they've had contact with anybody who's been diagnosed with COVID-19 in the last 14 days. So I'll say no again here. Uh, next, we're gonna ask, um, this is the at -at -at, um, that they're attesting to the fact that they haven't had any of these things. They're gonna certify that the information is correct above, and then they're gonna provide their signature. Um, what's unique about this form is for many organizations, there are concerns about um, PII and PHI storing um, protected health information. In this case, ArcGIS Online organizations want to avoid doing that. So what we're doing in the survey form is we're not capturing any of the responses to the health-related questions. So we're not, we're not storing any information uh, related to health. We are storing information about the person's name, the location that they're trying to check into, as well as their email address. And then we're storing a result. Either they are admitted or they're rejected, uh, so they can't come into the building. And that's all we're storing. So you can um, you don't have to worry about the fact that you may be storing some of this personal health or protected health information in the cloud uh, because we're not doing that as part of this survey. So I'm gonna hit submit. So that submits the information. We also provide a very similar survey, a visitor health screening survey that has all the same questions. This is intended to be shared publicly so people can access, um, so the, the general public, if they may be needing to enter your facility, could fill out the same form. You can leverage identities. For example, if you have uh, community users using ArcGIS Hub, you can leverage that for residents in the community to, and you'll get the benefit of it pulling their name and email. Otherwise, if they log in anonymously, they'll just have to submit their, their name, phone, and optional email. But the rest of the questions are the same, and we're all submitting into the same service. Once I submit my health screening information, uh, now in the office, you would typically, many organizations are going to have uh, a health screener 
who's at a particular checkpoint for anybody who's going to be entering the facility. And that health screener is going to leverage the health screening dashboard to monitor and make decisions about who is permitted to enter the facility. Uh, so what I get in this dashboard is a quick view of everybody who's filled out the health screening and has passed the initial um, component and is now in a temperature check state. So my organization has decided that once people fill out and attest to that they don't have symptoms, uh, we're going to conduct a temperature check at the entry point before they're permitted to enter the facility. And this solution allows you to manage those temperature checks and record that information. So here's um, my screening that I just submitted. So as a health screener, um, I would be at the checkpoint. Somebody would come in, they would provide their name, I would find them in the list, and then I would conduct a temperature check. So I'm gonna click this button, and this is gonna open the temperature check survey form. It pulls in my information, my name. I'm going to perform the temperature check and then I'm going to enter the result. So if they enter, for example, anything greater than 100.4, uh, that is considered a fever and they are not permitted to enter the building. If it's less than 100.4, then they don't have a fever and they're permitted to enter. So I can capture that information and hit submit. And now when I go back to my dashboard, uh, we have about a 15 second refresh interval. So you see it refreshed. I'm moved from the temperature checklist and I'm added to the admitted list. So now I can proceed into the building and we also have a history of, um, of who was permitted to enter the building. Another key thing about the temperature check is, again, we're not actually storing the temperature that was recorded. So we're not storing that health information. We're just updating the status of whether they're admitted or rejected. So another function of the health screening uh, dashboard is it can be used by human resources to, let's say, for example, at some point, we discover that somebody who was in one of our facilities has since tested positive for COVID-19. We could go back to a point in time and see who was in the facility. So let's look at a couple weeks ago in building two. We can see who was admitted to that building um, on that date. And this can serve as the starting point for working with, for example, the health department as part of contact tracing. So we understand that there was someone in our facilities, uh, our, a particular building who's tested positive. We know all the other people who were permitted to enter the building on that date. And this can be the list for follow-ups as part of contact tracing. Some organizations may choose uh, as part of the temperature check workflow, maybe they don't want to do a temperature check at the door or they don't have the resources to do the screening at the door and, and perform the temperature check. Some organizations may choose instead to have someone uh, measure their own temperature and record that in the initial health screening form. And with the health screening solution, we make that very easy for you to do. So now um, in this form, I'm gonna select no to all the questions. And this time we're going to provide a temperature uh, question. So we're gonna ask that you record your own temperature and provide your result. So again, it's the same logic. If it's 100.4, I'm not allowed. 100.3, I am allowed. And now if I were to submit this form, rather than ending up in the temperature checklist, I would immediately go to the admitted or the rejected list. So we're skipping this step because we're not having a health screener do it. We're asking that the people when they fill out the initial form, do their own temperature check. And that's how we control who was admitted or rejected from the facilities. So with that, I think we're gonna stop and, and pause for a second and take some questions. All right, so we had a, a few questions come in. Um, first one, I think you just addressed it. I do think with the kind of discussing where information is stored, but we can kind of just re re reiterate on that. So like where, where this information in the health screening is stored and then also what exactly is stored. I think in particular, someone was asking about 
um, how we're managing the personal information, secu- you know, the security around yeah. that type of data, um, yeah. where it's stored and things like that. Yeah, so we're leveraging hosted feature services in ArcGIS Online, both solutions are. Um, in turn, there's, a, there's often questions about HIPAA and PII and PHI. And yeah, I think more of it is around the, the health screening aspect because we're asking individuals to answer questions about their health related, um, their health situation. And to reiterate, we're, we're not storing any of the responses to any of the health-related questions. We're simply um, using those questions to calculate a result. We store that result, whether it's, a, it's essentially a pass-fail, and that's how we determine who was admitted or rejected to the building. So hopefully that alleviates some of the concerns about storing health information in ArcGIS Online. Yeah, one of the th- one other point on that, Chris, too, is with respect to, to G- GDPR and uh, data storage provenance. Um, new ArcGIS Online organizations, as you're creating a new ArcGIS Online organization and you are a European user, you can designate that the data for your new ArcGIS Online organization be cited in a European data center. So that is a relatively new option available to European users. Um, if they are looking to um, set up a new ArcGIS Online organization, if you have an existing ArcGIS Online organization, that, that is, capability is not available. But um, if you have an obligation um, as part of GDPR to be hosting data in uh, inside the European Union, um, we now have a mechanism to support that for new ArcGIS Online organizations. Excellent. Um, and then uh, there was a few questions, uh, all kind of related to the coronavirus site safety plan map editor. Uh, so a couple that are very similar. So where can they get, or can they get access to the the icons specific within that application? And then another related to those, the kind of symbology within that, can they pull those into ArcMap? Yeah, so the, so the good news about uh, both of the, uh, the, the styles that are available in, that are used in the Coronavirus Site Safety Map Editor, the, the existing icon sets are coming from the government or, and or the public safety uh, style sets. So if you're using ArcGIS Online, you will find them as style set options um, for any kind of symbology that you're doing. They're also available as pro style X files for download. You can download them, you search for them and download them from uh, ArcGIS online and you can make use of them uh, for uh, ArcGIS pro. Chris, I don't believe there's currently a way to access those for ArcMap. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Mike's on the phone as well. He might know about the the style file, but I think we only produce it for Pro. Yeah, we only. Uh, that's right. This is Mike. We only produce it for Pro. I'm I'm not aware of a way to consume that inside of uh, ArcMap. So okay. so yeah. So n- n- we can and we can share. Shauna, thank you for that question. We can share that uh, URL uh, for the uh, for those icons for the style X files for for follow up. Um, one of the other kind of questions that came up that Matt was alluding to was around um, if you can draw a polygon around a room using the map editor and then set the square footage to 60 square foot to see the number you could shelter per room. Um, the tool doesn't really work that way. It's deriving its calculation off of the square footage from the polygon that you define. So um, you're not, you can't manually enter a square footage. It's going to just calculate that based on the polygon that you've created. Although certainly if you wanted to open up, go to the web map that powers the uh, map editor application and open go to that layer and go to the label and view the label expression, you can see the math that we're using. And if you want to modify that for your own particular purposes, um, you can modify that little that expression to your heart's content. Uh, then one other last question, I think maybe before we, uh, we, we move on, it came, was in regards to, does this solution work in ArcGIS portal or it, would it only work in ArcGIS online? Um, both of these uh, solutions are currently for ArcGIS online. 
Um, in the coronavirus site safety example, the reason is that the solution uses uh, hosted feature join views. Those are not currently supported in enterprise. Uh, they're only supported in ArcGIS Online, uh, but uh, as soon as enterprise supports uh, hosted feature join views, uh, we will make the solution available in enterprise as well. All right, so that was all for questions. Great, I think I'm gonna hand it off now to Mike, who's gonna talk about um, applications of these solutions in conducting safe elections. Thanks, Chris. And I'll just briefly mention that we put links to the public safety pro style and the government pro style in the uh, Zoom chat. Uh, so like Chris mentioned, I wanna briefly set the solutions and workflows you've seen demonstrated in the context, in the context of conducting safe elections uh, this November in the United States and beyond. Uh, elections may not leap to the forefront of your mind when considering site safety and health screening workflows. However, managing facilities in the form of election day polling places or voting centers and a large, often temporary workforce are both central to conducting a safe and successful election day at the local level. Uh, as the upcoming general election faces the pressures of the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as a highly contentious election, the CDC recently made several recommendations to help protect communities and reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Um, these include creating health safety plans that protect voters and poll workers, and crafting new election day policies and procedures to reduce crowding at polling places. So election officials can use the coronavirus site safety solution to create these health safety plans for each polling place to mitigate the risk of COVID-19 spread. Using the capabilities of the solution that you've seen, each elec uh, election officials can estimate a polling place's capacity, plan queuing lines, check-in and voting areas, and many communities are even creating outdoor areas in the form of queuing lines or tents uh, or pavilions to help voters maintain social distancing when a polling place has reached capacity. Due to these new concerns, there's a heightened emphasis on a well-planned polling place. And perhaps most importantly, health safety plans can be shared with key stakeholders and poll workers so they understand exactly how a facility should be configured and operated to ensure a safe election day. I mentioned a large and often temporary election day workforce. According to a report released by the US Election Assistance Commission, more than 200,000 polling places were opened and staffed by more than 600,000 poll workers in 2018. This represents a unique back to work challenge because most poll workers are either volunteers or part-time staff. So election officials need to ensure this large workforce is not exhibiting COVID-19 symptoms when they report for election day. Using the coronavirus health screening solution, election officials can easily conduct health screenings before, health screenings before workers are permitted to enter a polling place. It can be used to self-report coronavirus symptoms or contact, record the result of a temperature check, and importantly, track who is permitted to enter the polling place as a poll worker. In addition to tracking workers entering the polling place, managing voter crowding and a polling place's capacity is more important than ever. Using the crowd counter application included with the coronavirus site safety solution, poll workers can track voters as they enter and exit a polling place. Crowd counts can then be translated into wait times and tracked using the election management solution, which we didn't show you today, but is one of our solutions focused on election day workflows. Election management also helps manage election day issues that arise with uh, things like computer hardware, facilities, or supply requests. These issues and others occur every election day and need to be handled promptly and safely. Particularly this November, Issues and requests for assistance need to be managed intentionally because they can impact the amount of time it takes to vote and so increase potential exposure. Election management allows poll workers to submit issues, office staff to assign requests to field staff, and field workers to view and complete assignments. For example, requesting and, deliver, and delivering additional PPE supplies. Similar to what Chris showed you earlier in the coronavirus site safety solution, but focused a bit more on election workflows. So while election day may not be the first thing you think about when it comes to managing facilities and a returning workforce, the solutions Chris and Chris demonstrated, as well as some others, can be used effectively in just that context. 
in the chat, we've shared a link to, or will be sharing a link to an ArcGIS blog post we recently authored that discusses these workflows and how ag agencies can use the ArcGIS solutions you've seen today to conduct safe elections this November. At the bottom of that post, you'll find uh, an associated GeoNet post with some configuration tips. Uh, the important takeaway in looking at elections as, a, as an application of the solutions you've seen is that your clerks and your election officials are thinking about these issues and how best to manage them. Your skills and ArcGIS can help them out. And I think Chris is gonna wrap us up with uh, some key takeaways. Yeah, th th thanks a lot, Mike, and, and, and thank you, Chris. Um, I hope every, this, uh, this session has been useful for, for everyone. I just wanted to kind of recap some of the key takeaways that you've seen in today's meetup with regard to our newest back to work related coronavirus solutions. Um, you know, we've got two new solutions that just came out health screening and coronavirus site safety. These are really intended to help organizations understand your facilities, their capacities and their status to be able to organize your reopening strategy that is going to make your employees or visitors or uh, customers feel safe from a health perspective. Uh, to be able to build those safety plans to ensure that you've properly placed the right health assets, that everyone knows where those assets are, uh, that you are prepared for understanding your capacity, uh, and that that information is available to those stakeholders in your organization who need it, and that you are able to, on a day-to-day -day basis, manage that health safety plan uh, and conduct health screenings to ensure sure that uh, all of the employees, citizens, customers entering that facility are safe uh, and able to be in that facility without endangering others, um, with really the overarching goal of helping organizations and workforces return to the office and be functional in this new normal of the pandemic. Um, so uh, uh, just as I mentioned before, both of these solutions are available through ArcGIS Online. If you are currently current ArcGIS Online user, both of these solutions are free for you to download and use via our new solutions app. If you haven't had a chance to use our solutions app, it enables one-click deployment of these solutions into your ArcGIS Online organization so that you can immediately start to uh, use these in your organization. Um, thank you for everybody for joining us. I'm just going to turn it over to Matt. Thanks, Chris. So we like to capture feedback on all of the meetups we do. So if you using the link here, and I'll go ahead and paste this in chat as well. If you would like to send us some feedback on this meetup or really anything in general, we have some ways to capture that within the form itself. So using this short link here, this will take you to a ArcGIS Survey123 form, you can submit your feedback. We'd love that. Um, I also posted in the chat, so I posted that link into the chat for you. If you want to just go ahead and like copy the chat before we close the Zoom, that might be the best way if there was other links you want to save. Um, I put the, Mike mentioned the elections blog, so that's up there. We have a variety of ArcGIS solutions blogs that I put, um, that we put up on a regular basis. So I put a short link or a link for that as well. And then also a, a link to, Getting, getting started and getting uh, familiar with the ArcGIS Solutions app and how you can deploy those, as, as Chris mentioned. Um, so with that being said, uh, we really appreciate you joining us today. We know your time's really valuable. Um, our next meetup is scheduled for October 22nd, and we'll be discussing the new special event solution that we just rolled out. Um, so until next time, goodbye and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. <laughs>